up against a dominant esports team in New Zealand. We'll see how they go. As they are undefeated, they go up against them last week, jumping over into champ select. There it is. UT versus the PB. Let me just get those uh, get those names a little bit bigger for you. And uh, we do see the Shen Mumu bands coming out. Uh, two quite common bands. Uh, Shen, obviously, uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've seen just how strong he can be. When uh, when an experienced player is uh, is at the helm, Shen is just a split pushing menace. So uh, also banning out the uh, Twisted Fate. So really looking to uh, shut down those globals here from UT. Amumu, the only ban so far from PB, waiting on their second one. And we'll see uh, who they're looking to ban out with this one. Most definitely. It doesn't look like anything... Oh, that is a little bit targeted. They do get out the uh, the Curse of the Sad Bullet Time, which Earth and Turf, they are sort of known for. They do like getting that misfortune, but they do like protecting her with a variety of supports. I'm pretty sure Lulu's going to get picked out here. If it's not banned out by PB, as the third band, very popular pick. I'm sure it might even be first for UT coming out. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw uh, if we saw a rumble though as well. And it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get Blitzcrank Shin. They do have Shin down there. Sorry, Blitzcrank and uh, and Malphite. Maybe they're going to get that global down. I'm sorry. Maybe they're going to get that team fight element down on the third band champ. They're going to get rid of Wu Kong. Apparently, the top laner from UT's playing been playing a little bit of Wu Kong. That's what I love to see in, in teams there. Oh no. And there's all of the all of the buddy requests banning uh sorry, covering the band champions. Thanks for that, dude, for ruining the game and my life. <laughs> that's an that's an interesting Tell him how you really feel, Theo. Uninstall. <laughs> no, it's it's just random mates of mine. I'm not even popular. They're just randomly at me. They're like, oh, I'm blocking up Snowy Stream. Cheers for that. And there's that <laughs> Hulu insta logged in by uh, by PB, by Paul Bryan. RNX actually grabbed up on the Malphite very quickly. Maybe going in that top lane. We'll see if he does go into the jungle position. What if he goes even support? That'll be interesting. Support Malphite, but I'm, I'm sure that's not going to go down. And a super dominant bot lane. The Lulu Caitlyn poke is just insane. I can see uh, PB definitely going to be putting some hurt down and looking to win out this bottom lane um, fairly safely with without needing a whole lot of jungle pressure by the looks of it. Most definitely. It's, I mean, it even uh, it even promotes that a lane swap. Lulu and Caitlyn, they deal a lot of damage and, uh, and they really clear a lane and clear a tower really quickly because of the range and the damage on Caitlyn. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if we saw a longsword start out from her going top lane and, uh, and they just wiped that out in seconds. Doesn't always work though, especially not against Malphite. He's very durable and he can poke decently as well. So if they do manage to go for a lane swap, they may be in for a bit of a surprise. And there's that yeah. Tristana coming out from Edible Paper. We've seen that a couple of times. Lots of jumpy jumpy, but uh, most notably we saw it um, on VGN on Hee 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 with all of the refresh jumps. It's insane. It's uh, it's funny to see Tristana. It, you don't even need to protect this Tristana. Come on. She jumps behind the enemy team, gets one kill on the enemy ADC, jumps away again, while the rest of her team are distracting them and just decimating them from the front. It's hilarious to see. Really good tactic, but it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of skill to pull off. It's, it's quite difficult. And uh, interesting, interesting pick of the Tristana Tarek into the Caitlyn Lulu lane. Though I do feel definitely like uh, it, it's um, it's something that during the lane phase is going to be able to hold on uh, and definitely sort of give poke back and uh, and sort of pressure the AD carry support from PB. But definitely something that in a team fight, uh, just the uh, just the simple utility out of Lulu, probably gonna probably gonna be able to be a little bit more effective. Than, uh, than the Tarek, but you know, it all comes down to the skill of the player, so we'll just have to wait and see how we go. We do have the uh, electric mouse, electric hamster, whatever you want to call him, locked in there <laughs> the for PB, the Pikachu, and uh, a Jarvan as well, so Demarcian Standard coming out there as well. And uh, as we see, a uh, maybe a bit of Oriana Warwick coming out uh, for Earth and Turf. Potentially, that's going to be a very powerful com combo. I'm not sure. If, I'm, I'm pretty sure the defense, the command defend, actually follows him when he gets into his ult. I'm pretty sure it does. So that's quite devastating. But it would, uh, it would potentially deny his ult by knocking the uh, the friendly, sorry, the enemy champion out of position. I don't know how that works. I've never seen it done before. But he does lock in as the Nasus anyway in the BCS. We saw so many Nasus jungles, very strong, getting out uh, potentially 
I mean, I'm not seeing it now. I do have that, though. Some of these spells covers up. But if you want to go Nasus in that jungle, you've got consistent farm for your Q. And you've also uh, potentially got that... Uh, oh, damn it. The Ghost. Definitely. The Ghost. Coming in for, uh, for ganking lanes into the Wither. It's really effective. Um, if he goes into if he goes into two v one lanes, I thought he was really bad with that. But if you level his uh, if you level his fire wall ground thing, do you know what the name of that is? There, uh, spirit fire. Spirit fire. Yeah. yeah, I just slightly forgot that there. But uh, spirit fire. If you level that up to level three at least, it clears lanes. It cl clears lanes. Clears lanes like <laughs> it's like nothing at all. And and super, like, really interesting pickup of the Ariana here. I'm not going to call it out just yet, but I watched a couple of OGN matches and a couple, couple of the uh, sort of the B grade OGN matches over the weekend. And something that I'm going to call out right now the Tristana into Command Shockwave. I have seen it, it's absolutely incredible. Tristana gets the defense, uh, defense, uh, Command Defense on her, jumps into the enemy team, they all focus, Command Shockwave, Malphite comes barreling in at 100 miles an hour. It is an insane, insane uh, engage because everyone just wants to kill Tristana yeah. so badly. And um, OGN actually played, on to, like, played into that Amazingly, I believe it was uh, KT KT Rolster, one of their uh, one of their other uh, B grade teams, and um, the Tristana um, Oriana is actually a very strong combo because you don't realise how, uh, how uh, when your Oriana gets fed, it's a whole lot of shield, and Tristana is able to take that initial burst uh, into the command shockwave. So very interesting to see how that goes. If only they had and, a Shin and a Lulu, that would make just, <laughs> that would just be silly. Well, well, everything would be uh, on Tristana, though, but as soon as she gets a, a Guardian Angel, it's sort of like, a, everything, everything on Tristana, pile on, people, come on. <laughs> Let's do this. Doggy it's, pile uh, on Tristana. It's it's, it's actually a very interesting, uh, very interesting uh, way to see them play, and uh, we are into delay now. So the um, it's looking like it's going to be a jungle malphite top lane Nasus on the side of Earth and Turf, and we're going to have Jarvan in the jungle, looking like possibly a uh, mid lane Akali and top lane, uh, top lane Cannon. But uh, having said that, you know, uh, the fact that uh, both Cannon and Akali can do you know, multiple roles. You might see uh, Kennen uh, mid lane, Akali top. It just depends on uh, what uh, Shingy and DG Crystal uh, are really happy to uh, are really happy to uh, verse up against. Obviously, going up against either the Oriana or the Nasus. So um, be uh, be something that's going to be uh, interesting to see. And I'm actually very excited to see these bot lanes. Uh, Ranger obviously playing uh, on that Caitlyn and Lulu on. Uh, Lulu coming out as a support against the Tarek uh, Tristana. That matchup, I have a feel, uh, will will probably decide the game. Got um, feel, I've got that. I've got that feel. Got them feels. <laughs> um, in in all the other lanes, it looks very. Uh, you know, in the uh, early game, the champions are very similar uh, as far as um, as far as power spikes. Um, you know, the Malphite to Jarvan, very similar. Uh, Nasus to Akali and um, Nasus Oriana to Akali and um, Canon is actually very similar depending on their level and items. They actually build very, very similarly. Um, I mean, they're, they're very different in playstyles, but their actual power spikes come at relatively the same time. So the only real difference in this entire matchup is the AD carry support. That is where it's going to make the difference. Uh, Caitlyn in the early game is a lot stronger than the, uh, than the, uh, the Tarek uh, Tristana bot lane. So I'd be very interested to see uh, whether or not uh, PB is actually able to uh, actually able to force uh, Earth and Turf uh, that Tristana. Obviously, they are on the blue side, so they're going to have the advantage of the golems in the early level too, uh, which is really going to work in work in helping that, and possibly the reason why they bought the uh, brought the Tristana in. But uh, very uh, a whole lot stronger end game out of Edible Paper and Aaron X three uh, on there for Earth and Turf. But uh, the early to mid game definitely in favour of PB. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a big difference between both of the teams. You've got the protect the ADC combo on that uh, on UT. They're doing quite well with that. I mean, they've got they've got a decent mix of AP and AD, and of course a lot of good burst on Tristana. She does scale way better into the late game because of her range. So she gets a little bit outranged by Caitlyn at the very beginning, but she can play aggressively. I know Edible Paper uses that jump aggressively, like not so many people do because they are afraid they're just going to be out of position. They're going to be like a Leona, just get a get a Zenith Blade off, and then oh. Oh, okay, I'm here. That's, that's not good. Oh, we are actually getting into the game. Wow, oh my god, I changed the screens over to the BCS. I'm, uh, I'm a horrible person. 
I need a <laughs> shot in the face. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it's a lot of AP bursts coming out from uh, from PB, which I'm fairly surprised by. I don't know how well, they're the going to scale well with that. I mean, it's quite assassination comp. I would have thought they went for uh, the the Rumble in the Jungle. <laughs> Sorry, the Rumble in the top lane as opposed to the Kinnon. He's looking for that AoE stun going out, which is quite difficult to pull off. But as long as you've got the skill, you've got the, uh, you've got the speed, you've got the power, as long as that's all going for you. Whoa! We do have four diamonds sitting on here. It is. Uh, I'm kidding. It's actually four diamonds coming out from Season 2. Uh, there, is a, there is a little bit of disparity here. They're... they're uh, I think currently they're sitting at gold and silver ranks. We do have one final actual diamond sitting in that team, though. Oh, actually, plat. Never mind. It's going to be a plat. Um, something, something interesting uh, to sort of uh, to sort of note as well. Um, the cannon into Javan ulti actually super, super strong. Uh, something you don't really, uh, you know, that cannon. Uh, I, I have a feeling that cannon might actually go more for that AD. Um, AD roll, stun and burst, uh, as, I mean, the amount of AP that's already going to be coming out from the Akali, um, oh, I have a feel that a cannon, cannon, we might see a little bit of hybrid building, maybe a little bit of early AD to help him last hit and that sort of thing, but uh, the cannon ulti into the Jarvan ult is just absolutely incredible and so strong. Very interesting to see the Malphite going in the jungle position. He's, he's quite a slow jungle, but he's quite consistent. And of course, he's got that range for getting the slow off. I don't know how that's going to work with him going into ganks. He, he is quite a slow ganker, and he needs that ultimate to get into a really consistent gank. But there are, you know, as long as that slow goes off, maybe Tarek will be able to get in range for a stun. Um, and of course, they do have uh, the ultimate, sorry, the shockwave sitting on Sidria as well. And Kai Farm's got the wither. So... There's a lot happening for each lane going into gank. It's not all on four to pull off that uh, that unstoppable force. Can't go in there with a Q. And it said that unstoppable for a later date. I mean, you, you definitely want to do that for, for characters like Zen and, of course, like Malphite. Just saving that audacious charge, saving that unstoppable force for that last moment when you know they're going to escape with Flash. Securing those kills. So they, they've got quite consistent gank potential. But on his own, Fua, probably not that consistent. So for slows getting them in the jungle, it's quite a lot like, um... Ah, damn it. Like, uh, Rage Man. <laughs> the guy with the beard. Olaf, there it goes. My brain, it's working! Um, <laughs> quite a lot more like Olaf. He gets those slows off consistently and chases and whacks you in the face with his Welcome giant fist. So, in the jungle, bed. maybe we'll see a little bit of counter from that. But, uh, boom, you're dead. A bit more effective in damage and in, uh, and in chase utility, to be honest, in the jungle. And he's great for doing those jungle ganks. He's great for doing those uh, those minion steals in the jungle because of that Demacian standard into Dragon Strike. There are there are a lot of uh, a lot of utility ways you can you can use a Jarvan to take control of the map, and people just don't realize. I was playing, ah, th I think that was a Zach the other day. May have been as uh, as Ramus, and I was up against an Udir. That would just steal everything in my jungle because I was too busy helping my lanes. I was too busy being a good guy. And then Snowy falls behind. Oh, it's just so sad. No uh, direct invades except from except from UT actually getting a direct invade. And PB going in to see the blue buff themselves. Although UT have watered this out, so PB might be caught out. PB just might get found out if they go in and, uh, and try and take the blue buff. They are hiding there for a gank. I think they're going to go back to their red as soon as, as blue comes up. But if they do go in there... Oh no, out goes Shingy. They do ward it. That's not going to pick but anything up at the moment. I think, oh, they I know think the, going to happen. The I fight. think at the moment, uh, PP are really happy to trade this out. They're not worried at all. They're going to trade out the uh, the blue buffs, and those wolves will respawn really quickly. So it's not, you know, for Boom, you're dead. Not really the biggest uh, biggest problem in the world. And if uh, Kai Fam comes over to try and, uh, try and uh, sort of hold off that blue buff, he is going to get snapped by the... Uh, by the combo of Cannon and uh, Akali there, but uh, he has backed off. Boom, you're dead. He's just uh, counter-jungled it back, no big deal. And we actually see a swap coming in, Cannon going in the mid lane. Uh, and Ranger putting out some hurt early game. Like we said, definitely the stronger team here in the early game uh, on uh, on PB. Yep, it's not going to be. Oh, I do actually seem quite quiet. That is kind of weird. Um, do I'll uh, speak for just a moment there, Rockman? Absolutely, man. What we're seeing is uh, a huge uh, defensive start 
coming in here from PB. They've gone uh, 11 pots on Akali, 9 pots on Cannon. They're all about that sustain. And in this bot lane, we've got a little bit of harass, edible paper on to Ranger. Ranger really having the best of that trade there. And uh, Theo having a bit of testing by the sound of it. Just getting my audio levels up, it actually defaulted to 12, so I'm going to put it at 80 and see how that works. Is that a little bit better? I think it's a little bit better. Yeah, that's, uh, you might need to turn me down too a little bit snowy by the sound of it. Well, but, um, whoa. It's, Sorry, uh, it's guys. defaulting. It's defaulting. I can't do anything. My, oh, my no. apologies. Edible paper going so low, and my goodness, they will be able to uh, really oh, force the flash there from Edible Paper. Did really well to flash that pilt over Peacemaker, but definitely Ranger having the uh, having the win in this bottom lane. Malphite already having to come to lane three minutes in and just defend that turret. Edible Paper getting smashed at the moment. He's four CS to Caitlyn's fifteen. She's already. Uh, you know, only three minutes in, but she's already ahead of him by about 200 gold. So that is just going to start snowballing super hard. It was a matter of making sure that Tristana could hold out till late game. Doesn't look like that's going to be able to happen. Really uh, great work here early from Ranger and uh, Cooney in the bottom lane. That's the range poke that you get from a Lulu and a Caitlyn. I mean, come on. Pa built up a pacemaker and Glitterlance are destructive. And they've got really good range. And you don't need that much sight to actually pull them off. They've got great damage potential as well. So taking over that lane very quickly. I mean, Tristana will come back from that because of her late game CS ability. She does get a lot of uh, she does get a lot of range just from leveling. But we'll see if that's going to be able to make Gaidal uh, Paper that much more aggressive. He's gone back and got himself some health bots. So we didn't he didn't go straight for the uh, long sword or anything like that. He's gone for more sustain and goes shooting in the top lane and the mid lane. Sorry, does get managed to get a stun off, but uh, as soon as we are going for that flash. Getting away from the Dragon Strike, and that's standard engagement when you're dead. Not that knock-up going quite enough. And something interesting to note here, we said, uh, you know, the lanes are quite even. Oh, mate, Edible Paper getting forced out there again. We said at the very beginning, the lanes are super even, except for this bottom lane. That's where the disparity is going to be, and you can already see it 30 to 6 in terms of CS in favour of Ranger there on the Caitlyn. Really making work, and uh, a great gank, as you uh, were calling there in the mid lane. Uh, Shingy getting that stun on to Sidria and forcing that flash out. They'll be looking for another gank very shortly. Looks like Jarvan uh, will probably do, their, do those rates and then move back up and uh, possibly have another shot at it once this next wave pushes out. Definitely such a giant difference in their, in their bot lane CSV ADCs, it's devastating. Here we go, uh, for, here, <laughs> boom you're dead, trying to get off that uh, CS steal from the raids. I don't think it quite worked out for him there, he is sitting equal to Fuha right now in the jungle, they're doing pretty well. No uh, no real ganks going out, just a, just a little bit of poke, just keeping the lanes dominant and, uh, and present. That's a really great tactic for a, uh, for a jungle, just keep your presence in the lanes that are getting dominated. So. I would have expected Fu to be hanging around that bot lane a lot more, but they don't have the aggression to, to move forward with a lot of their attacks. Now that Edible Paper has gone back once, they should have, but uh, but they are still getting poked out pretty immensely, and it's, it's a lot to do with Tarek's, Tarek's loss of health at the beginning. He's not able to stay in the lane, not be able to, not able to get aggressive, only able to dazzle out opponents, but is that going to be enough to control everything? By the way, heads up, I am Snowy Padre, and this is Rockmar joining me for casting. And you are watching the Camera to Gamers LOL Esports Points Rounds number two for the 2013 season. A couple of people have been asking in the chat, so uh, yeah, there you go. And uh, something I want to talk about, uh, obviously with uh, with Fua going to that mid lane there, he's going to make a decision. It's a pretty hard decision to make as a jungler, but what the decision for him at the moment is, you have the option to either try and save this bottom lane. As you have mentioned, the disparity in terms of CS is huge. He has the option to either try and save this bottom lane or gank lanes that are winning. He either has to decide, you know, Caitlyn's going to get out of hand and there's nothing we can really do to shut that down uh, unless I pretty much babysit you, which means, uh, you know, it's, it really is a disadvantage if he's not able to get those ganks off. It would be pretty much a babysit. Uh, role at the moment. Tristana obviously not going to be able to go up against that Lulu Caitlyn, but the other option he has is can I can I affect other lanes and actually gank lanes that are winning? So we'll see whether he tries to go top and actually force on lanes that are making a difference in the game at the moment. Yeah, and just to hear that this is the Grinders division, so the Masters next week, and we did cast the Masters last week, we're going to be alternating it throughout the four points rounds for this half of the season. 
so you can keep up with uh, with each bracket, hopefully, and we'll be able to analyze each individual team and see if, see if somebody's, somebody's treating the brackets as a joke, seeing if uh, there's a Masters and the Grinders and we've got to pull someone up, because we might just have to. I mean, Earth and Turf, they're known for their power, but they have, again, as I said at the beginning of the game, they have had a couple of swap outs with their, uh, with their lineup. So they have been changing a little bit. They don't have Lone Linium anymore. And that is, uh, it's not necessarily hurting in terms of the players, it's hurting in terms of their team composition and in terms of, uh, of their ability to be used to one another constantly. DG Crystal, he's trying to get a little bit of grits against Kite Fam. I don't think he has the opportunity to Kite Fam. Just a little bit too tanky now. He has gone straight, uh, he is actually up in the top and I didn't put that up. There he goes. He's gone straight with that Ruby Crystal and he's got quite a lot of sustain. In goes DG Crystal with the ultimate now. They're able to trade equally, but Kaifan still has the Q. In comes Boom, you're dead. Is he, is he gonna be able to get close enough? DG Crystal trying to chase out with her dash. Not quite gonna work. Down at the bot lane, just more destruction going on. As we said before, in comes Boa though for a gag, and this is what we were saying. If they're able to get this off, they can take control of the lane. Joseph Cooney popping out the wild growth. May just be enough to get him out and save, and it looks like it certainly is. Getting that knock up, getting that slow, and then a speed up on Lulu. Perfect disengage. They have a lot of disengage. They've got a lot of uh, strength going into the lane. It's going to be really hard to deal with them at any point in the game. But I do believe Edible Paper could potentially come back. He's got that jump potentially. He's got uh, the ability to refresh that jump. Go it's going to be a whole lot. It's going to be a whole lot harder now, Snowy. Uh, obviously, the BF sword just picked up then by a Ranger, and that is a huge advantage in terms of uh, in terms of damage in that poke. Uh, he's already at uh, at 2,500 gold uh, to edible papers 1,700. So he's he's pushing himself quite far ahead, and this is going to really start snowballing that early advantage. And yes, hello to Kevin, and a shout out from a shout out to Kai Fan. We got somebody telling me to shout out to Kai Fan, so I may as well. What's up, Kai Fan? Playing in this game, he's uh, he's doing okay. He's nice. he's always doing okay. Sitting at 50, 52 CS to 62, going all right to a uh, to an Akali who does have, of course. That tasty little energy can spam out abilities really effectively. And now taking over the top lane. Let's see what damage he's been able to do on that turret. Not that much for Nasus onto, uh, onto the PB turret. So now getting a bit, a bit out control. That is the issue with Nasus. He does scale very slowly, but ridiculously effectively. And out of control if you let him as well. If that turret goes down, if DG Crystal doesn't sustain that landing phase, it's going to allow Kai Fan to free farm up the top lane. You really don't want to do that. You want to get that aggression to, uh, to give you the option to tower dive more effectively, but yeah, it's, it's definitely worth it trying to keep that top lane going as long as you can. Boom, you're dead, being found in the jungle by Fua. In goes Little Paper with the aggression and flashing over. He didn't manage to get an ignite off because he does actually have barrier instead. That would have been embarrassing if he tried if he tried to ignite them just then. Just maybe. But Boom, you're dead, getting away, thankfully, with a, uh, with a dragon strike to Marcy in standard combo. Joseph Cooney does try to get away again with that wild growth. Doesn't look like it's going to work. First blood does go down to Oriana. In the mid lane, and that is going to be so powerful. Definitely, uh, definitely something to... Uh, it's a bit of a question, to be honest. Um, Kaipan going for that, uh, for the Ignite on the Gigi Crystal, actually sneaking in, giving the Q off, and he doesn't go down to the turret. He manages to heal off just in time. That My was goodness. Chance. I believe he was just sub 100 there, but he's going to continue poking this turret and done uh, pushing up. That was intense. A little bit and, uh, risky for Akali to jump back in there. Huge trade there um, in favor of Earth and Turf. They've, uh, they're about uh, 500 gold down before all of that happened. At the moment, they're sitting about uh, about 900 gold up. So a 1400 gold swing there in favor of Earth and Turf, which is huge. That's really going to put them back in this game. Um, and, I mean, at the moment, we're looking at the lane. Really, as I said, that was going to be the lane uh, everywhere else across the field. It was going to be even. But uh, being that uh, Edible Paper able to get himself an assist there, as well as Aaron X, that's actually going to afford them a whole lot more gold, put them more, uh, sort of keep that gold disparity to the same sort of level. Uh, Ranger jumped on here by Edible Paper and Aaron X. Ranger's just going to run back through. He is getting chunked down quite hard. The snare will come out and Lulu is back. The barrier onto Ranger has done well to keep him safe there. And uh, Joseph Cooney being a bit uh, bit aggressive here and acing the hole onto Aaron X. Not for the kill, but just to force him back out of that lane Give uh, to give uh, Ranger some time to free farm against Edible Paper, who even at this stage... Uh, on that low health there from Ranger, won't be able to trade with him. 
at half the CS it will play, but yeah, he just doesn't have the damage output to kill Rengar, even with Tarek putting up the chase, getting out, uh, getting out the Dazzle, getting out the Shatter as well, getting, giving Armor Shred. It's just insane how much damage Rengar has over them, how much sustain as well. Picking up just a BF sword, but he does have boots, so he's got great escape potential. Not so for Edible Paper, and down in, uh, in Mana as well. He may just be able to jump in and get this. No! Pushing them out as, uh, as Boomyo dead. Doesn't, uh, doesn't quite jump in there. I thought he was going to get, uh, get in the thick of it, but he was just scaring them away for a moment. It was that 3v3 bot lane. In comes Spoor. He thinks he might be able to get a 1-up on them. Just maybe there's no sight. Oh, actually, no, there is no sight. But he does get caught up by a little snap trap. Sad guy for uh, getting all the sight. In comes Cydria now with blue. And that initial kill. She did manage to finish off an Athens Holy Grail and scale straight into a uh, two of the Goddess. That's going to be crazy. Scaling up in damage. Is it, is it going to be an auto attack, uh, Oriana? Yeah, maybe. I, I favor auto attack Oriana just like I favor auto attack Rise purely because Oriana's uh, clockwork wind up. I think it is on her passive is hilarious, but it's, it's definitely not as good on Oriana because of that minor scaling. It's, uh, it's way better on Rise, the damage output, but it's hilarious to see nonetheless. Yeah, and something interesting to note: uh, Jarvan going straight for those uh, for those claws uh, for the uh, blood raises. Uh, as we see, DJ Crystal getting jumped on in the top lane, top lane giving zero. I can't say that. Demacia <laughs> comes out from Boom, You're Dead. DG Crystal trying to run past and will get back out. Do Boom, You're Dead doing a great job there. But uh, Boom, You're Dead, like I was about to say, building the Madrid's Razors um, is not helping him in team fights at all. It's a lot of gold to be spending on uh, on an item which, uh, which, again, gives you no help. As you can see, Malphite gone in for that Giant's Belt already. Edible Paper and Ranger having a bit of a trade in the bot lane. And uh, Joseph Cooney having a bit of fun there cleaning up. And uh, 6 CS on Joseph Cooney to Tarix 2. Uh, so obviously the gold advantage there going to... Uh, st oh, sorry, still going to uh, Aaron X with his uh, fellow stone. Joseph Cooney, a little, uh, little bit harassed there going onto the, uh, onto the edible paper on the Tristana. DG Crystal has no escape available. He's looking for those minions to jump on. In comes Shiggy, putting up the stun. DG Crystal waiting for her friends to come in. Saber, he will go down, thankfully to Fua, sorry, sorry Kaifam going in there, picking up the kill. That was hilarious to watch, Kaifam was scaring all of them out of that top lane. He just really didn't care. And, and a perfect wait out from DG Crystal, waiting for, sorry, waiting for Shiggy to come back in there. Really, Yeah, really and actually a, a great engage there from Shiggy as well, great counter engage, um, really making, oh wow, a huge, as we see Ranger, get onto that edible paper Aaron having to block that one and they'll pick up the turret and push this down dragon not too far away so we may see uh, may see PB forcing this lane and uh, going back for dragon Jarvan just circling around to the bottom side jungle at the moment so we could see this happening very shortly and we appear to be having a little bit of stream lag I'm just going to be checking on the dropped screen so if it's not a dropped screen that it will be an issue on your end but maybe it is an issue on mine. We will restart it at the very end. Of it is just a moment as I check that. I do. But it was fine last week with no drop frames. Yep, there are zero drop frames on XSplit. It will be because of the quality settings. And again, we do apologize. People have complained they didn't see anything on lower quality. And uh, to be honest, we want to give the production quality a higher value and show that we we are serious about streaming. We are serious about making esports big in New Zealand. So hopefully you guys can uh, can put up with it until we get partnership, <laughs> until we're able to get those lower stream qualities for you guys. And again, sorry for that. Hopefully it's gonna be. Hopefully it's gonna get better. Uh, Kai Fam, just looking at the build now. Kai Fam obviously building straight into that uh, that Sunfire Cape. Interesting, he hasn't chosen to go for the. Uh, for the early, uh, what's it called, <laughs> brain blank, uh, into the early sheen, but um, obviously happy to sort of say, I'm not going to do a whole lot of damage, but I can out sustain you, and you're just going to have to deal with that. Doing more than enough damage to DG Crystal at the moment, and with that passive 20% lifesteal there from Nasus, really being able to stay in lane up for a long while, happy to trade under the turret as well. Definitely, nearly that Leandre is coming out from surgery. Are going to be spiking her damage so much in the mid lane. Of course, she did get out with her first kill, and that has gotten her so far ahead. She got a little bit of aggression on her in the mid lane. Um, who who managed to get that kill onto Oriana before? Uh, the kill onto Oriana came out from uh, it. 
believe it was DG Crystal picked it up, but Shingy, um, Shingy uh, slicing Maelstrom up behind the uh, the turret in the top lane there uh, was the was the security on that oh, one. Yes. Oh, we see Fuwa jump in there. Shingy gonna get the slicing. Oh no, no, not at all. Command Shockwave comes out and that will be picked up. That'll be mid turret. DG Crystal having to push in that mid lane. Aaron X clearing out this jungle and uh, really. Uh, a couple of minutes ago, uh, PV really in the really in the realms of uh, being able to actually take this dragon, and uh, left it a little bit too long. We can see uh, Earth and Turf now pushing in, and they will take this dragon, second dragon of the game, for free, pushing their gold lead out to just over a thousand gold, and uh, doing really well. Um, despite the uh, the pressure from that bottom lane to get themselves in here, uh, at the moment we've got. Uh, Caitlyn's just got her IE, so that's a huge power spike for her, and Tristana is a fair way away from uh, from that Blade of the Ruin King, about uh, 1,200 gold at the moment, but uh, once she gets that, she'll be able to spike herself. Aaron X getting ignited, he won't go down, oh, DG Crystal go back in to make sure he does, and pick themselves up a kill there, uh, although DG's Crystal, uh, DG Crystal's aggression in the middle lane has meant that uh, Kai Fam just pushing up that top lane, he gives no cares, and we'll just continue to push. He knows they're coming up for him. At least Shingy, he saw him on the way up, but uh, not really scared of the electric hamster at this point. Flash show dance. Oh, God, I love that play. It is so clutch, and it is so well ranged as well. As the rest of uh, PB are trying to get aggressive into this mid lane, it's interesting to note that uh, PB, their, ch their, sorry, their champion compositions, they've worked out well in lanes. They've been able to, uh, to, I don't know, their mechanics haven't been stronger than UT. They just have more aggression and more lane power, lane control and damage. In terms of, uh, in terms of team fight mechanics, you know, it's, we see a lot coming out from DG Crystal. Oh, we, they are getting a little bit aggressive against Skyfam. He's a big tank, though. He just doesn't afraid of anything. Um, but yeah, DG Crystal and Shingy working very, very well together. But uh, but UT seem to be showing a little bit more team play, a little bit more response in their uh, in their attack and their defense. And of course, you've got Kaifam there who just doesn't doesn't even afraid of anything. He just doesn't even care. That's he doesn't afraid. So well for edible. He doesn't afraid. I'm with you. Um, no, something to something to really note. At the moment, Akali has both kills for PB. Um, not a great place to have your kills. I know Akali is a really, really strong, real... She's a huge powerhouse um, into the mid-game. And uh, having kills on her is not a bad thing at any, uh, you know, at any point. But, uh, you know, the kills actually spread out across the board for Earth and Turf. You've got Malphite with two, Nasus with one, Oriana with one, and assists across the board as well. Now, being that Malphite has two, he's got that early Sunfire cape, and he's also uh, got himself at that early Spirit Stone. Now, what that means is Malphite is roaming a whole lot more than Akali's been able to, and he's actually the one who is making these ganks happen in all the other lanes as well. So much power on them, and look at their tankiness. They've already got two Sunfire Capes up on UT. They can take a lot of punishment, but it works in, uh, in PB's favor, to be honest. They have a lot of AP bursts coming into their team combo, and a lot of that is AoE as well. So they may be able to take away team fights as long as their damage output is up to scratch, but they are dealing with extremely tanky champions. Especially Nasus, you know, he's, he's got the sustain with his ultimate that, uh, that Malphite only has coming in with his passive. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that scales in the late game, but I feel like it is a little bit in favor of UT. They've got great protection mechanics. Absolutely, and uh, from what we've seen so far, uh, I'm, I'm going to call it out. Fuwa, really the difference so far in this match. Uh, of the four kills on his team, he's been a part of three and has really put a whole lot of pressure across the lanes. Like I said early on, it's going to be his call whether he's going to uh, gank the lanes that are winning or try and keep that bottom line, uh, lane alive. He basically said, you know what, I'm going to gank the lanes that I know we can make win, and he's done that. We've got the kills on every other lane. He left bot lane on the island and basically said, you know what, we can win elsewhere. Um, late game, uh, uh, Caitlyn's not going to be able to uh, to hold out against us, and a great catch there coming in from Aaron as well. Yoik. Very tasty. And hello, Hamish McManus. Cheers for joining in. As we are seeing both in converging to the mid lane. I've got to say, PB got, they've got no turret to run back to if they start getting engaged upon. And UT have really, really great engages, although they are one-off engages. So once they're pulled out, there's not much else they can do to chase out the rest of the enemy team who have disengages to, uh, to respond in kind. You've got Slow coming out from Lulu with the, uh, the Glitter Lance, and of course you've got the Demacian Standard 
Dragon Strike coming out from, from Javan and everything else from everyone else. Gonna ignore that there as, uh, as Javan goes in to steal a bit, uh, a couple of the jungle minions. Also, a bit. Who are notices that jumping in with the unstoppable shockwave as the yeah, the ultimate coming out from Juice and Punic onto Shiggy. It's not gonna quite work out the fledgling else because didn't go down really now. He knows Sun's going down and Boom goes in trying to focus down the other way but manages to fight the ADC is gone and knocking up the entire rest of the enemy team going in with the match instead of Dragon Strike. Doesn't quite work out for them though going 2 1 and just keeps on sucking up all that damage and pulling it out as well. He has scaled so well in the early game. He's moving up and killed, getting the cues off on the enemies, pulling it out with a flash cube on a Joseph Cooney there. And he does manage to get the wither onto Boom, you're dead, getting the slow. He's actually in range. Down goes Damasian Standard into Dragon Strike, giving him the save just barely. Oh, amazing chase potential on Kaifan. They're gonna move in here, grab just two turrets, I think, and then they've, they've got map objectives to take. They don't need to be here. They can take the rest of the jungle for UT. Oh, sorry, for PB, come to think of it. It is UT rolling across the map. And something to note as well in this engage, we watched Caitlyn get everyone so low. She forced Thua super, super low. She uh, was the one who managed to get the kill onto, uh, sorry, got uh, edible paper really, really low. Akali picked up the kill again. But then, chasing the kill onto Sidria, ran right in to Kai Fan and basically just stood there for three or four seconds and that's all that Nasus needs. Two Qs, you're done. Uh, if uh, if Ranger had a, managed to keep himself at max range and just attack whoever's closer, I really feel that would have been a different story. Um, he really did a huge amount of damage output in that last fight and uh, unfortunately trying to trying to chase down rather than just hitting who you're closest to doesn't put AD, ADC in the, best, uh, in the best position on the map. Exactly, and as you pointed out before, yeah, Fuwa does get very low with initiating in those team fights. It's very dangerous to him. It's Kai Fam who's coming out with all of that ADC protection, all of that team protection, sucking out all of that damage. People, I don't know what they ignored him for a time. I'm pretty sure he was in the middle of a whole bunch of AoE and auto attacks. He came out of that with full health. Just didn't even care. He moved in through the turrets, not even caring for more because that's what you can do. Anyway, you've got a lot of tankiness coming out from Boom, you're dead, and another dragon going down for UT, putting that gold cap up to 5k now. That's a pretty pretty significant amount of that. Oh no, actually, that's just looking at the And in goes the, uh, the combo again from Fua and Sidria. Uh, they are jumping on the rest of the enemy team. Sidria simply put it down by GG Crystal. Actually managing to get out of there with Flash, I believe, and Edible Paper coming in to finish off the rest of the team as Kai Fan puts off the damage with the Q. A little bit of a split up team fight, but it is going to be uh, it is going to be PB walking out of there limping with Boom Your Dead and Shingy going down. Boom Your Dead is their savior. He did put down the uh, the locket of the Ancillary, and he has built up with that Aegis just now as he went back. So he's tanking up well for the well for the team, but he's still not quite with that amount of power that he can continuously come in and destroy everything. Mm, there is a Blade of the Wound King sitting on that Tristana, moving in and taking out Boom Your Dead. It's going to be very easy for Tristana, and she scales so well with range and attack speed. And to the late game and boom you're dead he's jumping in there quite alone and the rest of the tankiness coming out from pb just isn't there once he's down the rest of them are just bait waiting to be slaughtered absolutely and something to note as well twice twice shingy has been unstoppable forced and not once uh, yet has he been able to uh not yet has he been able to actually lightning rush if he's going to hit that lightning rush at the right time that unstoppable force isn't going hit him. He gets movement speed, uh, he, sorry, he ignores uh, unit collision. So that unstoppable force actually coming in won't actually affect Shingy. But he hasn't been able to lightning rush either of those unstoppable forces. Uh, meaning that twice now, his slicing maelstrom hasn't got off the full duration and got those stuns down. Uh, really showing great work here from Fua to, uh, you know, sort of recognize that Shingy missed the first one and missed the second one and he has been the focus. He's got his Zonias now, so he, he is going to be a bit safer in these team fights. but um, the focus shown by Fua and uh, also by Kai Fam onto that, Shin, uh, onto that cannon coming out from PB is, uh, is making all the difference in the world. Yeah, he's not able to get off that ultimate, but he's got that Zonia, so maybe he will be able to deny the ultimate coming out from Malphite. If he gets off the Slicing Maelstrom and then pops Zonia's and the rest of you key come in, he's in a very, very good position to deal a lot of damage, but he's probably going to die as soon as he gets out of that Zonia, so he wants to get off um, He wants to get off the AoE stun Sorry, with, uh, with the Electrical Surge. Maybe it'll, be, maybe it'll be happening. The rest of his team do need to tank up significantly, though, and focus targets directly. They do have a great amount of damage output, and especially their bot lane, you know, it scaled so well early in the game, they got so much damage off, and then the IE came out so quickly from Caitlyn. 
she's not able to get protected and she's not able to stay in fights for very long. Uh, maybe a couple of guardian angels would change it around. <laughs> and uh, something to notice, I really feel that it's um, it, the difference is the Jarvan to the Malphite. Jarvan building aura bot at the moment and really just going uh, in for that locket of the Iron Solari. Got his Aegis at the moment and going into Bulwark, but really uh, really not doing uh, as well as Thur is. Basically just saying, I'm a meat shield, deal with me or else. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of escape coming out from, uh, from Sindria. Uh, Sidria, when she gets um, Jarvan ulti, when she gets that uh, Cataclysm on her, she's not getting it. But so far, Jarvan hasn't been able to get tanky enough to get in there and throw the uh, throw the uh, Cataclysm onto uh, onto Sidria. He's been uh, getting a whole lot of harass out by Aaron X and by Thua, and really at the moment they're doing they're the ones that I feel are, are, are doing work. Yeah, I mean another giant spell coming out from Thua, so he's noticing his. His issue with health there, you know, he may just die when he jumps in, he's noticing that. And that's where they need the initiate, because, you know, Nessus, he comes in very, very slowly from behind. He's working on that, though. He's got himself an Iceborne Gauntlet. Once he starts AoE slowing the enemy team, he can follow with that Q as much as he wants. He'll just chase them out all across the map. He doesn't have a Ghost, though. I thought he would be picking up a Ghost, but he went for that aggression in the top lane with the uh, with the Ignite, and it worked out decently well for him. Pixie couldn't deal with the damage he was outputting in the early game, combined with his tankiness. And that's the great thing versing in that top lane with a Nasus, um, especially if you're not going up against a, a Jace or a Rumble, you know, you can get uh, up close and personal, and he tanks up really well as well. So, damage output and, uh, and tanking is Kaifam, you got this. Absolutely, as we see at the moment, it's looking like Earth and Turf. Oh, no, they're spotted by a ward, but Kaifam is going to pick up onto Cooney, and uh, Fu is not going to let him get away. Oh, he will, through the bush, not wanting to engage into an unwatered brush. Pretty smart choice there by Fua. Not the face check that you need at this point in the game. They're able to, uh, really at the moment, uh, we're seeing Earth and Turf play a game of minions and turrets. Uh, they're not so much worried about uh, about anything else other than uh, you know what minion, uh, where the minions are in the lanes and what turrets can we kill. They're really, um, I mean, at the moment, obviously ahead in terms of uh, gold and kills, but uh, it's not been as a result of uh, of looking for kills. It's been as a result of looking for turrets. They're really playing a game uh, more of um, the replete. Sorry, really playing more of a game of turrets. As we see, oh my god, Ranger getting dropped down so hard. Malphite's Unstoppable Force has been on song this game. That's uh, four Unstoppable Forces for four kills. Malphite is doing work at the moment. It's absolutely incredible. Fua is uh, obviously, uh, they're going to want to ban the Malphite out against Fua next time. He's really just making a huge difference in this fight with Malphite. That was absolutely devastating. And that's where you get the power of wards. Absolutely, absolutely. So many pinks going down in the jungle there for Earth and Turf. And like we said, playing a game of minions and turrets, they were basically waiting for that mini wave to push up as we see Shingo go in. He's gonna Zonya's. And there's a uh, beautiful <laughs> doorbell going on there. Anyway, GG's doorbell. Yeah, down that ADC of the UT and actually chasing out the rest of the team, getting perfect focus on that despite the dive. And GG Crystal is a little bit of danger here. They're just a little bit. Fire here, they're pulling up a little bit more damage, and they've got Kai Bam on their team. What more could you want? Well, going out from four, he does manage to get pulling for they are going to focus down Joseph Cooney coming out with a uh, with a three for two, I believe, in just a second. Come on, you can get him up. There he goes down pretty quickly there, and Rengar does have the wither on him as well. They are going to back out, they know that the damage isn't quite in their favor. A combined, uh, combined AB burst with an AD auto attack burst. It's not fun to play up against that, but overall, you know, PB, they did decently in that with their turret, but they overextended, and uh, their focus was great with DG Crystal taking out, uh, sorry, taking out Edible Paper there at the back of the team fight, but then he was isolated, and that's the problem, you know, you get that focus, and I was going to say that just before, there's a lot of poke coming out from, uh, sorry, from PB, and they've got a lot of great engages, and they've got a lot of great, uh, great targeting maneuvers and good damage output, but when they try to poke out, they're up against Fua. Once he gets that unstoppable force initiate off, or if the rest of the team is just solid and together, which they were in that team fight for UT, then there's nothing much else that PB can do. They're looking for that damage. They don't have the durability that, uh, that UT has and has built up with their gold advantage. 
and that's what's chasing them away. They've been they've been split apart, and they've been forced to focus specific champions, which has now outplaced them in team fights. And uh, I'm back. I want to apologise for the uh, the old random Ding doorbell. Dong. Ding dong. And uh, as we see, wow, um, Earth and Turf really doing well in that last team fight, Snowy. Oh god, I was about to go into pol politics there, talk about the Iron Lady and, uh, and Ding Dong which is dead, but gonna, gonna step away from that. <laughs> I don't, I don't news. That's not how I roll. But, uh, Paul's going out, let me see what's just happened here. Let me see what these guys are talking about. What's going on? What are they talking? Time ran out. Oh, apparently they're playing in a net cafe and their time ran out. Good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> We've got to wait for them to, uh, to time in, to clock in. Something, something really interesting to note, though. Uh, one thing that we spoke about early on was going to be the power spike from Tristana. Mm. She's hit that level 15. Now, she's only a little way away from her final level of ulti. But the thing to note is items. She's got IE to Caitlyn's IE, and she's completed her Blade of the Ruined King. Now, that is one item which in my opinion, is stronger than the Phantom Dancer. It gives you so much sustain, gives you the attack speed, it gives you the on-use, which can help you win those duels. Now, Caitlyn, having bought Home Guard, hasn't yet finished her Phantom Dancer. She's not going to be far away. She's got about 850 gold. I believe she needs 825, so she does have that Phantom Dancer now. But the fact that Edible Paper has been a uh, able to catch up just shows how well, uh, after the laning phase, uh, that uh, Earth and Turf has been able to bring this back. Yeah, she's an amazing champion. Early game burst at the close range and then ranging, sorry, outranging a lot of champions in the late game, building up AD strength. And that, uh, and that powerful attack speed buff as well. It's insane. Seraph's Embrace has been finished off by Sidria as well. Maybe building it with an Andrews, that would work quite well for her, but I think she's going to go potentially for uh, for that Sonya's Hourglass to protect in team fights. It's going to make her devastating when Fua gets that initiate off and they're like, okay, we're going to ignore him and go straight for the Orianna or straight for uh, for Edible Paper. That's going to put them that much further ahead. And, you know, yeah, that's it's really, really uh, disheartening when you've already got a, uh, a Zonia's Hourglass on your team like PB has and they're starting to focus a little bit more on Joel. They've got that Lock of the Day Iron Solari. They've got the... Um, They've got the bulwark as well, but they're still not out tanking the enemy team, and the enemy team is starting to become invincible as well. Absolutely, and uh, we see the uh, the pickup of the NLR there by Shingy. He is yet to impress me. I, I'm not trying to uh, not not picking on, but um, his ultis haven't been uh, anywhere near as uh, as clutch as Sidria's have been. And the slicing maelstrom is such a strong ultimate. Um, for him not to have landed a really good one so far in this game is really uh, is really the difference between um, you know between winning and cannon, uh, winning with cannon, and uh, just playing him. So at the moment. Unfortunately for me, uh, Shingy not uh, not doing enough for his team uh, in terms of what Sidri has been able to do. Sounds like an old TV show, winning with Kenan. <laughs> uh, but maybe we are going to see a dragon engage. Sorry, a baron engage. That's a, that's one mighty dragon there. No, we're going to see a baron engage. No, they're just clearing out the woods and trying to bait out the dra the baron, the, the drabaron. And it looks like PBR catching on a little bit. To this. There's not quite any wards coming into the jungle. A little bit more sight coming out from PB. But if they're caught out just uh, just that little bit, you know, it's, it's UT that are looking to the engages. It's that's working right now for PB. And if they're caught out right in the middle of everything, once they get close range into UT, they're not able to do anything. They have been split and up. And oh, on no. the wrong side. This is not going to be good news. She will manage to get unstoppable forced, I'd imagine. Uh, Fua, no, he's just going to fight on the other side. It's going to be four versus one on Boom, you're dead. And the ulti straight on to Shingy, picking up there. Shingy going to uh, <laughs> pop that uh, Zonny's hourglass. He will go down. Oriana doing a great job there, command attack. Caitlyn able to stay at range, but doesn't matter when your front line's dead. Will go down through the barrier. And Lulu going to whimsy herself away and try and put some distance between her and this scary, scary Nasus. That's, uh, that's, that's it. Just again, it's PB getting split up across the team fights, and they were doing okay. They had they had good moves out from individual players, but they didn't have great targeting, and they didn't have the, the damage out, but it's raw power coming out from UT right now. They can be in the middle of a team fight and not care. They really can. And the thing to notice about that fight, Fua was on the top side. He was on his own. He was basically just standing there, and he was happy to take so much hurt. He was getting hit by Ranger and... 
Cooney and boom, you're dead before he jumped over the wall. He took himself down to half health and he was happy to do that. They used so much time beating on him while his team was in the 4v1 and he was happy for that. As soon as Jarvan went over the wall, boom, unstoppable force and he took out two members of their team with the Oriana straight away. And honestly, Fua's positioning in that fight made the difference. Ranger wasn't happy to jump in and actually start beating onto, uh, onto edible paper or onto Sidria because Fua was between him and the team. And uh, the positioning in that fight really made a huge difference uh, and uh, Fua obviously able to uh, force the hand of, uh, of PB in that fight and uh, force them into a fight that obviously wasn't optimal for them. As we see a little bit of poke going on, PB is going to try for this Baron. They're not uh, not alone. The uh, the whole team of UT is coming in, and they're not going to be worried about this. I can see the uh, unstoppable force about three seconds off cooldown, and there we go. Edible Paper doing work at the moment. DG going down. Boom, you're dead. Will follow him surely. Baron doing work. Fua picking up Baron there. Great smite. Shingy going to go down to the unstoppable force. Ranger flash for the kill on Sidria, picking up the second of that team fight. And that will be another kill there onto Ranger. Double kill from Kai Pham. And again, Joseph Cooney trying to keep that KDA up and get himself away from these team fights. Two for four exchange and a Baron steal. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a. It's going to be a whole lot harder uh, at the moment for PB. Obviously, just the Lulu up. They have Super Creeps on their Nexus at the moment. They've got uh, two more Super Creeps heading in here. Kai Flam uh, obviously got the uh, got the uh, RSVP BYO Creep Wave, and he's doing it at the moment, uh, bringing another two Super Creeps. There's no way that Cooney's going to be able to hold off this push. Kai Fam doing so much damage. Q's on those towers, hitting for a massive amount. Uh, Nasus is Q at the moment, stacked up to plus 360 damage and hitting that. You just watch that Nexus get chunked down. He is not even worried. Fua just sitting there beating on the Nexus. They'll take down GG Crystal. Oh, he will get away. Lucky, lucky heal there. Kai Fam deciding, you know what? I'm just going to do this Nexus. It's all over. And a great fight put up there by PB. A great early game from them but on uh, on the flip side of that fantastic top lane there from Kai Fam amazing jungle power out of Fua and Sidria landing clutch ultis all day very great game out of there from Earth and Turf yeah so give me a little bit of a, a breakdown of what happened in that game I mean of course there was a lot of, uh, of breaking apart I think it was the early game taken away by uh, by UT and of course they had the late game advantage with their team fights so uh, yeah getting that getting that early game advantage just with uh, with raw lane power in the top and mid lane, but they were they were bought down so much in that bot lane, but they made the kills happen. That's where it counted. I think it was just a little bit of overconfidence coming in from Team Paul Bryan, but we'll see how it uh, we'll see how it turns around for them and the rest of uh, the games happening tonight. I will give you a little bit of an update on that at the very end. What do you think? What do you think happened? Um, honestly, it was uh, it was a matter of Team PB not able to capitalize on their early game advantage. One thing that we said, um, you know, Akali early game is as strong as Nasus. She was not able to stop him before he farmed his Q up enough to make the difference. Jarvan was not able to impact the game as much as Malphite was, even though his kit allowed him to do so. And in the mid lane, Sidria beat out uh, the cannon uh, and was able to really, uh, was able to really mean that um, Kennen not able to do, uh, Shingy not able to do what he needed to do, not getting off those slicing maelstroms. And in the bot lane, Ranger and Cooney were not able to get the kills onto Edible Paper and Aaron X. They went down so, so low. At one point, uh, Edible Paper was almost 100 CS behind Ranger. He went to go straight for that Infinity Edge. And honestly, I feel like an early power spike would have been the better option. They were not going to win late game. Ranger was never going to be able to force Edible Paper and uh, go for that 1v1 late game. I really feel like, you know, possibly uh, an early Bloodthirster or a, uh, a Last Whisper or something like that to actually shred the small amount of armor that Edible had, making, uh, you know, Ranger deal true damage, uh, would have been a greater, a greater asset in that bottom lane because they only picked up one kill. Aaron X and uh, Edible Paper were below 20% nearly the entire time in that lane. And uh, Cooney and uh, Ranger just not able to convert that into kills. Definitely, and cheers for that look at uh, the entire game. A little bit of a summary. That was an amazing one. Thank you. I uh, wasn't paying enough attention. Anyway, kidding. I, uh, <laughs> I try. Um, 
uh, I am well, sort of TL, half administrating TLDR. this consent. <laughs> <laughs> TLDR um, really came down to uh, PV play, trying to play a game yeah. of aggression in that bottom lane and uh, Earth and Turf happy to play a game of creep manipulation and towers. That's that's how it worked out. They managed to pick up a lot of kills, but it was all about making sure that when they uh, were aggressive, their creep waves were in the right place. So as soon as the fight was over, no matter what the outcome was, they either were able to have creeps push down towers or go and pick up towers themselves. Mm, those tasty, tasty early game ganks by Fua worked out really well for that bot lane. They were like, oh, it's pushed up. Oh, okay. Guess what? You're vulnerable. Anyway, uh, we are going to move on to the next game in just a little bit. Blood Orange versus We're Not L30. Are you going to be able to join all of the games tonight, Rock? I may be able to. I um, There's a fair bit of storm going on here, so um, the uh, training has been cancelled for tonight, so I'm not doing that, but uh, obviously working in radio when the storm's around, it's not, uh, not conducive to having a whole lot of time to yourself. Yeah. So uh, we'll see how we go, but hopefully we'll be able to be with you throughout the, uh, throughout the evening. Awesome, it sounds great. Okay, we are going to go into a little bit of an intermission until we get Blood Orange versus We Are Not L30 up. This is the Grinders Bracket Esports 2013 Season New Zealand Cog Lol Esports Online Points Rounds Number 2. I'm Snowy, and this is Rockmar. And here's a break. <laughs> 